we actually have got an update from the developers of Outer Plane. Um, basically letting us know some information about their roadmap and what they've got planned right now. So I wanted to go over it for a little bit because uh, there's some interesting stuff in here. There's some interesting stuff. You may have heard these words before, but I'll teach you what they really mean. Go beyond! Plus! The issues that we have identified have been addressed through the June, ne June 13th update, uh, and we will do our best to respond to any issues that might remain or be newly discovered as quickly as possible so that we can mi minimize any potential inconvenience for our players. So that's cool. They're definitely doing everything they can. Uh, in today's developer's notes, we'd like to announce our planned updates through the month of August. In addition, as many of our players have raised questions regarding topics such as new as when Demiurg Stella will be available. The schedule for new hero releases and the balance adjustments, as mentioned in the previous developer's notes, I'd like to take some time today to address them and talk about our plans going forward. So one thing, like, I'm already super st stoked about that because the Demiurg Stella, that's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to getting Demiurg Stella. Looks like there are, they do have a plan for that. Uh, so one, update roadmap, overall direction, and update details, update direction, short-term direction. I'm not going to read all that every time because that's way too much. Primarily, I think that's primarily, we are focusing on resolving various issues remaining within the game and reducing gameplay fatigue. To that end, we will be reducing the difficulty of daily missions while also improving the supply of clear tickets and how they're acquired, which is really awesome. Like, I, I don't think the game's that hard. Like... I don't think the daily missions are that difficult, but getting more clear tickets is really cool. I, I'm very, very much on board with getting more clear tickets um, and how they're acquired, which means that they're going to give us more options, I assume. Um, we also will be reducing the difficulty of purchasing gear from the survey hub, uh, thereby direct, indirectly reducing the difficulty of progression through hard difficulty. Again, pretty cool. Um, right now, uh, trying to get the gear off the survey hub, it's not hard but it's not exactly easy it's it's pretty expensive so i like that change i think that's gonna be awesome additionally with the recent addition of guild raid content some quality of life issues have come to light regarding exchanging gear sets and we will be working to develop and implement and implement a solution as quickly as possible we are also working to improve various other elements throughout the game and until we feel that enough issues have been resolved and that the game has stabilized we plan to continue releasing patches on a weekly schedule I personally don't have an issue with them releasing patches on a weekly schedule. I think that's great. I also think that I would like it very much if they um, made it so that way you could still do the raid if you come, if you join a guild. Like, if you're just joining a guild, like, if you have a left, a, a, like, a leaving a guild pal a penalty in the middle of doing the raid, then that's fair. But if you just joined a guild, like, when I started, the, guild, the raid was already in progress. I would really like it if they could make it so that way you can still join the raid. But, you know... We'll see what they do. Um, so mid to long term direction, we are planning updates that will expand the scope of available content in order to provide players with more gameplay to enjoy and more ob objectives to work towards. It will help if I could speak. Key points for each month's updates are as follows. Starting off, we have June. In June, our goal is to introduce group content for guilds to enjoy and gameplay objectives for individual players through the addition of guild raids and a league system for the arena. League system for the arena sounds kind of cool. I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see where that's going to go. I, I want to see how they're going to implement it. It sounds kind of cool, though. It does sound pretty cool, but I'll, we'll have to see where they go with it. We are aware of the various issues that are affecting guild raids, and we plan to fix as many of them as we can before the next season begins in order to ensure that our players have a more enjoyable and comfortable experience Again, one of the things I would really hope I really hope they fix is making it possible uh, for a, for somebody to join, even if they join the guild after the raid started. At least if they like didn't just leave a guild, like if you just left a guild, like just left a guild after the raid started, and then you go in and you, but being able to play in the raid after the event period starts, I, I think that'd be a nice change. It'd be really cool if we could do that. Um, as there is not much time left in the month, we plan to focus on providing stable updates while moving forward with various planned improvements. Sounds good, sounds good. 
Moving into July, July marks the beginning of summer and the beginning of our summer event. This will likely come in the form of a new summer event story area. That sounds pretty cool, giving us some kind of special event area, uh, probably similar to what we've got going on right now with the Reaper event, uh, the Reaper and the Gangster event. That'll be interesting. Maybe uh, give us some kind of unit as well. Uh, furthermore, our main content update will feature the expansion of difficulty levels for the special request dungeons used to farm equipment. I assume that means we're going to get some more uh, like a 11, a 12, something that'll probably give us more higher tier gear uh, rather than the green gear, um, more of the blue, more of the red. We also plan to expand the Archdemon's Ruins and challenge missions will be added to the guide quest that provide challenges involving new content. Uh, so basically we're just getting more into the guide quest and then um, some more some expansions to the Archdemon's Ruins. Again, cool, sounds good. Uh, see how they implement it, see what they do. Sounds good though. In August, we plan to update the story area of Season 2 Part 1. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's because I haven't gotten that far yet. But I don't know what that means. Additionally, hard difficulty and light slash dark element raids will be added to the Skyward Tower to provide additional challenges for daring masters who wish to take them on. That sounds cool. It sounds like we're going to get some more to the Skyward Tower. That'd be interesting. Uh, so three events. Events to promote various in-game content will take place regularly on a weekly cycle following the July 4th maintenance. These events will rotate on a per-week basis and will consist of the following. Uh, increased raid gear drop chance and decreased crafting cost. That sounds good. That sounds good. Getting some more gear, getting the ability to craft more. That'd be really helpful for players, especially players that are just starting out in that time frame. <clears throat> or hitting mid-game in that time frame, more likely. Uh, increased acquisition of pieces from side stories and increased acquisition of investigation points. Again, very awesome. Like that. Um, we'll be looking forward to getting that. We have something like that going on right now, which is the increased uh, pieces from side stories. I don't know about the increased acquisition of inv investigation points. I don't think we're getting that right now, but that'll be really good too. Um, increased acquisition of arena medals and increased acquisition of guild coins and medals. Various other events, such as hot time events. So those all sound really good. Uh, being able to get more arena medals so we can use them in the shop, more guild coins, more medals. Uh, that sounds all really, really good. <clears throat> uh, there will also be additional events outside of the fixed schedule outlined above. We expect to release event story dungeons at a rate of about one per month and estimate the volume to be similar to or greater than the Reaper and the Gangster. So sounds like they're going to be giving us at least one event story dungeon uh, a month. That's similar to what we have right now with uh, the Reaper and the Gangster. So that'll be really cool. Uh, many of you have provided us with valuable insight regarding the inconveniences in the user experience and the structure of the game. With that in mind, we are preparing the following updates that will take place through August. Please refer to the image below for details. Now, this is what I'm really excited about. This image right here probably has the coolest parts of the update, in my opinion. Like, I am stoked for some of the things that they put in here. Who uses stoked? I do. Um, so first we have Demir Stella and Hanbyul Lee. I may be butchering that name. I do not know. Um, so obviously with the Guild Raid Season 1 with Maxwell, we have that going on right now. Um, event story, the Reaper and the Gangster going on right now. Opening the Survey Hub. They've already done that. So it says Demir uh, Recruitment Event. So we should be getting that event soon where we'll be able to start working to unlock Stella be able to recruit Stella and then uh, beginning of the seasonal arena which I guess we'll know more about that when it comes out uh, and then in July we have air and Mane with the guild raid season two being Kasai now I'm I'm kind of interested in seeing uh, Kasai I, I'm, I'm very prepared I, I'm ready for that fight I think that's gonna be an interesting raid um, and then event story summer island um, and then we also have the expansion of the arc demons ruins Expansion of special quest difficulty, addition of consumable craft, addition of consumable craft. I don't think I noticed that before. That's interesting. I wonder if it's going to give us like uh, some kind of cooking or something. I don't know. I'd be interested to see what that turns into. An addition of Ava's challenge missions. Uh, and then in August, we have Natia and Este uh, with Guild Raid Season 3 having us fight against Epsilon. Not really... Again, maybe because I just haven't gotten far enough. I'm not privy to who Epsilon is. Maybe I'll find out when I get to the end of the hard mode. Uh, event story off to the summer camp. Uh, Gardener of a Forgotten Paradise. So it looks like we have two event stories that are going to be going on in August, which is cool. Very awesome. 
uh, addition of light and dark elements in special request that'll be really cool uh, being able to get the light and dark element bosses there uh, addition of hard difficulty in skyward tower again very cool looking for that looking forward to that start of season two part one of adventure story maybe i just don't know uh, it's probable i just don't know um i haven't gotten there yet i need to i need to i need to finish the hard mode is what it's coming down to more than anything uh plan for improvement addition of hero recall growth reset i'm looking forward to that that's gonna be awesome we're gonna be resetting we're gonna be able to reset our characters that's gonna be wonderful a uh, decrease of battle fatigue in the arc demons ruins um i'm not sure what that means i haven't noted any battle fatigue but it may be one that i don't know again i haven't done all of the arc demons ruins i haven't done the um, infinite corridor so that might be from there uh, improvement in gear obtainment difficulty so i i, I assume that means it's going to be more difficult to obtain gear i don't know for sure addition of gear preset again not really sure what that means uh does it mean that we're going to be able to look for something specific i don't really know it doesn't say uh, adjustment of clear ticket obtainment uh so adjustment of clear ticket obtainment we're gonna get more clear tickets we're gonna be able to have more ways to get them uh separation of level up and upgrade so i guess that means that we'll be able to level up and then upgrade from a different location rather than having the level up having the upgrade just take the place of the level up i don't really know alleviation of fatigue from daily slash weekly missions I, I, again so i think i guess this is talking about the fatigue of like continuously doing the same thing because they did mention something about the gaming the fatigue of the game like maybe they don't want us to be like oh yeah you got to do the same thing over and over and over again that's kind of what it seems like it's going for here so i'm, I'm assuming that means they're going that that's going to be like removing decreasing the number of battles that are going to be available in the arc demons ruins and then um you know uh making daily and weekly missions easier a uh, renewal of ui icon ui icons we'll have to see what that is i don't know, I don't really know. um recruitment and balance plans for new hero releases we plan to release new heroes at a steady pace of once every two weeks the new heroes are being planned to fill get fill in gaps in the availability of three star heroes of each battle type for every element in order to round out team composition when building elemental teams we plan for these heroes to have effective use cases in pve pvp or guild raids depending on the characteristics so they're going to be giving us characters they're trying to make us make it possible for us to make elemental teams have an elemental team that works for pvp have one for pve have something for guild raids having units and, and uh being able to make elemental teams of one element so that's gonna be really cool and the first one we have here is demiurg stella recruitment demiurg stella the highly anticipated final boss of season one is scheduled to be added with a june 20th update so that is monday that is this monday's update is going to have stella in it uh, given her iconic status as a character we plan to introduce her through an exclusive recruitment under the theme of season boss recruitment her targeted drop rate recruitment her her targeted drop rate recruitment her i think they i don't think that it will be available for a period of about three months so that players will for about three months so that players will have a chance to recruit her without being too pressed for time so they're gonna give us three months to do the recruitment that's really awesome that gives us plenty of time uh, you know, people will have plenty of time to be able to get Stella. You don't have to be like, oh God, I don't know if I'm going to get her. Uh, Demiurg Stella will be available for recruitment through a separate recruitment resource, Call of the Ruler, which can be purchased from the in-game shop. So that I'm not a big fan of because that sounds like, okay, well, it says the in-game shop. So it doesn't say that we have to use real money, but I suspect we're going to have to use real money. So that might be a little bit of a pain. Um, but it does also say in order to provide a wider variety of opportunity to acquire Call of the Ruler, exclusive missions will be available whose completion will provide two free recruitment opportunities every day for one month following the update, up to 60 recruitments total. Pretty cool, but if the only other way to do it is to pay for it, uh, it could be a little bit rough. Uh, a little bit pay to win, I I'm not going to be the biggest fan of that, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Demi Stella was designed as a light elemental element bruiser striker and she displays outstanding performance in pvp and boss rates so here we have she's going to be light uh she's going to be primarily for pvp and boss rates so those are all worth knowing very good information to have we know where we're going to probably want to stick her we're going to put her in boss rates we're going to put her in pvp um and her being a light bruiser so she's going to be 
a light bruiser striker so all right so hero recall feature the hero recall feature as mentioned in the previous developer's note is planned to be introduced as a part of the june 27th update so that is not the next update but the update after the next one so not next monday but the monday after um so 10 days from the date of me making this video uh, this feature will be available through the hero screen using it will refund will refund all growth resources used on the hero with the exception of hero pieces and obtained exclusive equipment will be taken back slotted gems will be removed to the inventory so it, it's going to it looks like it's going to be resetting your trust right uh trust level as well uh, so you will lose the exclusive equipment that you have on your unit but it will not take your hero pieces so if you have a unit up to six stars uh you will still have that unit at six stars it will go back to level one I guess level five. It'll go back to level five. You'd lose the exclusive equipment and your trust rank. Uh, Codex growth goal, goal rewards and trust level rewards will not be provided a second time. It does not apply to exclusive equipment, so you can't you can't get it up to get them up to trust ten, reset them, and then get them up to trust ten again for the rewards. They're not going to let you do that. That makes sense. Um, this feature will be available for use two times. And the benefit will be provided equally to all accounts. Now, that one, I really don't know. See, it says the feature will be available for use two times. I don't know if it's saying that we're only going to be able to use it two times ever. Or if one unit can only be reset two times. Now, if it's one unit can only be reset two times, that's probably not too big of a deal. But if it's two times ever, I could see that causing problems. <laughs> We'll have to see what the implementation looks like and see how it goes. I think some people would not be too happy uh, with only being able to use it two times. But if it's two times, you know, if it's two times on a unit, that's nothing. That, that's fine. Uh, first, we have made adjustments to Rin and Alice on June 13th. Oh, the hero balancing details is what we're looking at now. Uh, so first, we have made adjustments to Rin and Alice on June 13th. Rin, the effect of skills one and three have been modified to allow Rin to better serve her role as her as, her as a damage dealer against fire element enemies. And the damage of her burst level three has been increased. We know about that. That's just what happened. That's what happened just recently. Alice, the effects of her skill two and her exclusive equipment have been enhanced to improve her performance in PvP. They like the word her. Her is in there like six times. Uh, so yeah, we know about that. Being, we know they, they fixed that. Alice is much better in PvP now. She's a much more usable character in PvP. Her exclusive equipment's great. Her abilities have been fixed. It's wonderful. Uh, we plan to make the following changes as part of the second balance update june 27th slash to be introduced with the hero recall feature so again not next monday the monday after uh, the talisman adjustments uh, the talisman's chain points slash action point recharge effect will no longer activate from additional attacks does not apply to additional turns currently noah and vera are the only heroes capable of recharging chain points slash action points through the method above and therefore they will they will be the only heroes affected by this change so you cannot use noah's multi-attack like her first attack and, and get chain points two times like you were able to do before you cannot do that anymore uh, because noah's damage increase proportional to max health is capped we decided that there was there were largely no issues with her damage output to her so i don't know why that says to her i think it's just been no issues with her damage output so that's an interesting statement because noah's damage increased proportional to max health is capped now i wonder because there was there's been some questionable about noah uh, some some indication that noah might be broken because her ability like what was said was that her ability doesn't appear to be actually hitting for um max damage like it's not hitting based on max damage but maybe the only reason why we're seeing it like that is because of the cap maybe the cap is stopping us it makes it look like it's not hitting for it but it really is um so that's that's interesting i don't know because i don't know what the cap is I don't, I don't think there's any way for us to see the cap they don't tell us what the cap is um however we felt that her ability that her ability to reduce weakness gauge and recharge chain points through additional attacks and her skill chain passive were too powerful so we have made these adjustments so they thought she was too powerful um i don't know if that means they're also going to reduce her ability to, to uh, take down the weakness gauge meaning that she would only be taking two for basic attack instead of four uh, without being fully upgraded i don't know we'll have to see how that plays out once the update comes through that'll be again on the 27th 
We plan to introduce these changes side by side with the recall feature to minimize any inconvenience players might encounter while progressing through the game. I guess that means they think like, hey, just in case you decide that you don't want to use that character anymore, we're going to put the recall feature out here. So if you've been building her up, you can take her down. I think she's still going to be good. I think she's still very usable, even without the chain points boost. Um, so... Uh, while Noah is uh, additional adjustments, while Noah is meant to be a damage dealer effective at generating chain points, a critical element in cleaning, clearing boss raids, we felt that dependency on her had become excessive, leading us to the changes outlined above. So basically, they said, "Well, she's too strong, so you know everybody's using her, so let's make her less strong." <laughs> Adjustments to chain point generation depending on the elements. Uh, oh wait, in exchange, the following adjustments will also be made to chain point generation as a whole. Adjustments to chain point generation depending on the elements of hero on the team. Before it was four, five, six, and seven. So one, two, three, four was four, five, six, and seven, uh, based on the number of elements of the same type of channel one team uh, per hero of the same element in the team. And now it is going to be four, six, and seven. Uh, four, six, seven, and eight. Uh, so it will be one, two, three, four with one being four, two being six, three being seven, and four being eight. So they basically just increased it by one. Uh, we expect this change to improve skill chain generation in the early game and in later raid dungeons that players will be tackling with heroes of a single advantageous element. So they really want us to push more into, rather than just using Noah to blow up everything, they want us to push more into using an element that is advantageous against the unit, against the opponent. I think that's more or less what they're thinking like right now it's at a it's at a space where noah just does it all and they're like well we don't really want noah to do it all we want you to have to use what we want you to use so um future balancing adjustments plan after july uh we plan to make changes improving weakness gauge reduction and chain point generation for natural three star heroes these changes are still under review and we plan for them to be implemented between late june and early july we will do our best to adhere to the development plan outlined in this developer's note, and we will review each and every update with a care to make sure players can enjoy the game to its fullest. We hope that you have a fantastic summer, and we wish you all the best. Outer Plane will continue to listen to your valuable opinions. So basically, um, it looks like they're going to be making some changes to the weakness gauge reduction in chain points generation for national three stars, which means it's going to become more of a, of a yeah, you want three star characters. Um, we'll see what ca what happens. This sounds great. A lot of it sounds really good. Some of it's a little bit frustrating. Um, but overall, uh, like I like the fact that they've answered our question about Noah. Like a lot of people were saying, Noah's max health uh, thing wasn't working. Like she wasn't doing damage based on max health. Turns out it was capped. That's why it looked like that. So it's good to know this information. I think this is great. Um, it sounds good. It doesn't sound like they're really doing anything to hurt anything. Uh, and I think it's going to be great. And we have a date for Demir Stella. That's a big thing. Uh, so anyway... Uh, it, yeah, I'm going to actually go ahead and um, change it, make this recording here on YouTube, for YouTube. Uh, so if you did enjoy, make sure you hit the like button, uh, and I will see you in the next video. Later.